Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Jinji Lindsay, the Director of Public Health for Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield. And we're going to talk about public health. It's been in the public conversation for a couple years now with the pandemic still ongoing. And now we're talking about the monkeypox outbreak as well. It's all been in the news. So public health is really a big deal. And it's something that you focus on with your job at Care First. So let's talk about your role, your background at Care First, and some of the things that you and your team are doing right now. Sure, um, thank you for having me. Um, so uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a primary care doctor by training, and um, I went into medical school with that ambition that many uh, future physicians have to provide really high quality care. I mean, in particu particularly, I was interested in providing care for people who look like me and have faced uh, historical barriers to good health. Um, very quickly realized um, in my medical training that the clinical care that was to be provided for people is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, I had experiences in prescribing, helping with uh, discharging patients from the hospital, prescribing them, you know, all this mountain of medications that they mm -hmm. couldn't afford to pay for, um, or trying to do exercise counseling um, and say, well, you know, it's just so easy, go out and take a walk. And, um, people would let me know that they didn't have sidewalks in their community or that it was not safe for them to, to walk alone in their community. Um, and we now know these things to be called the social determinants of health that were impacting, um, impacting my patients. And so um, with that thought that I wanted to, to kind of get more of those root causes of what was driving health, I went into a master's program and um, studied for my master's of public health. Um, came out, initially did primary care work um, for a few years in this region. Um, I also had some time overseeing community health programs for the um, city of D.C. Um, and after those experiences, um, having done the care delivery directly, having done some of the public sector work around, uh, around public health, I was really interested to understand how a business, um, uh, how as a business you can use those levers to really um, improve the health of our populations. Okay, and this is a new team that you're working with at Care First, relatively new? Yes. Um, well, I, I was just hired in late 2021, and so we're spending most of this year in actually building out that function. Um, and what we've kind of um, see as our roles um, within, uh, within Care First is, one, um, to strengthen our relationships and have more proactive relationships with our region, regional public health systems. Um, and definitely in close partnership with our local um, and state health departments, as well as our schools of public health. Um, I think our second role is to really provide some leadership to the enterprise and how we're looking at population health through an equity lens. And when we see where there's inequities, um, what can we do as a payer to, to try to level that playing field um, so that we can help our members and residents in D.C., Maryland, and Northern Virginia really have opportunity to attain their optimal health. So there's a difference between public health and health care. We're not always just talking about a health insurance company or a health care company of some kind. There is also public health, and that's what you deal with. Can you talk about some of the differences and some of the similarities between health care and public health? Sure. I think uh, one of the, uh, or two of the key differences are the audience and the emphasis. Uh, public health uh, tends to focus on populations, while health care delivery is largely focused on the individual. You go in to see your doctor, you get a treatment plan that is tailored to your needs. And the other is the emphasis. I think while healthcare focuses on diagnosis and treatment, um, public health is really looking at prevention and wellness promotion. The great thing about both of these is that when they work together, um, they're complementary and everyone can, can benefit. You talked earlier about the determinants of health, things that come maybe before you have issues with your health. Can you walk us through what that means when you talk about social determinants of health and, and things that you might want to deal with before you have a problem later on? So in this country, I think we've been grappling with for the last um, couple decades that we see the cost of care becoming astronomical. Um, and we're not seeing a uh, concurrent kind of increase in people's health um, or, or quality of life. And so what we're starting to, what we're understanding more and more is that um, the things that are driving health for people are beyond the clinical system. Um, we, there's statistics that you'll hear that healthcare delivery actually only impacts someone's health by 20%. The rest of someone's health is actually um, really determined by the places and spaces where people live, work, play, um, and age, and what we, we call those, those social determinants of health. And so those are thinking of um, housing, um, the ability to have access to good housing, good transportation, economic stability. 
Um, and so when we're talking about going upstream, we're talking about how can we um, address those other factors that are, that are um, further up the line that we know are going to drive poor health outcomes, those social determinants of health. And that's, that's really what we're talking about with upstream factors. So getting ahead of a problem, uh, basically, if you want to underline it that way. Yeah, right. there, there's a nice parable that people le um, that was used, I think, that kind of coined that term of upstream, where there's um, people walking by a river and they see um, people have fallen in the river, and so um, so you, so the, the the people stop, and they're they're pulling them out, and they're pulling them out, and this goes on for hours, and then um, then someone says, let's go up and see why these people keep falling in the river, and so you walk up the river, and you see that it's actually a very um, uh, there's a high cliff with no good signage and no rail to prevent people from falling in. And so when we talk about moving upstream, we wanna, what are the things that we can do to keep people from actually falling into that river? Sure. And so it, you need all the strategies, right? You, mm -hmm. need, you need to start the upstream, but you can't let the people drown. And so we have to look at multi-pronged approaches to really um, creating health um, and, and helping people attain their optimal health. And as you work on helping people obtain their optimal health, can you explain some of the issues you see with the current public health system some of the issues that you focus on, you and your team focus on, and also what you're doing to address those issues. Well, that's a lot to unpack. Um, I think a lot of, um, particularly coming out of this pandemic, um, even before the pandemic, the huge is issues with the public health system were funding. Um, and I think we saw that kind of play out with the pandemic where um, there just weren't the resources there from a human resources and a material resources perspective um, that, that allowed the public health system to mount a very quick response to, that, to, that, um, to the coronavirus. Um, I think also um, what we've seen now, um, that was a difficult time for mm -hmm. both public health and health care, and we've lost a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're dealing with now um, underfunded, under-resourced, understaffed, um, health departments and, and health systems. Um, and I think that, that's a huge challenge. Um, where we can kind of interplay, we are a business, so we don't necessarily control all those, um, all those things that impact the infrastructure of public health and public health systems. Um, but there are definitely opportunities where we can support and partner. Um, one opportunity we always have um, as a not-for-profit who has interest in, um, in our communities um, we can provide funding support through grants. Um, we, uh, during the, the pandemic, we were able to do things like provide um, personal protective equipment to, mm -hmm. um, to some of our uh, local partners. Um, I think now moving forward, um, what we're looking at is where can we really support and align with our, with our partners in this system. When you look at the public health issues that you're focusing on, are you running into barriers as you try to address these issues? Well, um, I would say that we're we are knee deep in setting a foundation for for this um, function at Care First, okay. and so um, haven't gotten to the barriers yet. But if I can come back in a year or two and, and talk to you more about that. Okay, that's good. Employers and businesses must have a role themselves, even if they have a role outside of the healthcare system. They have to do something, especially as we talk about the pandemic, whether it be testing or, or anything like that, they must have a role in addressing public health as well. It's not just health care companies, health insurance companies, but just regular, uh, average, everyday businesses. So do you think that there's something that they can do, uh, businesses and uh, other employers, to improve public health just in general? Absolutely. I think the first is um, how you can actually support your workforce. Um, okay. What are the what are the programs that you can add into your offerings for your employees? Um, for me, one program that really helps my health is my employer offers childcare. Oh, um, so I have ten free childcare uh, days a month. Uh, sorry. Childcare is expensive. I, <laughs> I, I I don't have kids, but I know that it's expensive. It's in the news all the time. It's very very, very pricey, expensive. expensive. Yeah. And it's very stressful for working parents when mm -hmm. schools shut down um, or there's some unforeseen circumstance that prevents that you uh, prevents your routine childcare that you have now. This option takes some stress off of me, allows me to to work a full day and and feel healthy that day. Um, so I think just from that, and of course the traditional things like nutrition programs or exercise um, benefits, um, I think those are all helpful. I think also the other side of this is looking um, at those social determinants of health that we discussed, what are ways in which businesses can help their communities address those social determinants? 
Um, are there things like what Care First is doing with our supplier diversity program and trying to create economic opportunity for, um, for minority business owners? Um, workforce development and pipelining programs. Those don't sound like health programs, but those actually do um, help people to achieve um, good health in the, in the long run. What would you say you're most excited about when it comes to the future of public health? Um, I think what I'm most excited about is really not just public health and not even just health care, seeing um, across the industry people really embrace this concept of equity. Um, again, we can't separate out people into little compartments and say that you have your health here and your education here and your um, income here. Mm -hmm. All of these things interplay with each other. And so it's really exciting to see um, other people in the industry like banking institutions and educational instit institutions really take on their role. And how are we creating, again, more opportunity for people to, to really be healthy and really thrive in our society? I think that's quite exciting. I think the other um, thing I'm excited about that I mentioned a little earlier is this opportunity to create more alignment between public health and health care. Of course, all right, well, thank you so much. Uh, Gingy Lindsay, the Director of Public Health for Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm your moderator, Nick Ionelli. For more on this discussion, visit WTOP.com and search Care First.